Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Loop and Learn's T1D speaker series. And this is our first series starting in the fall. Um, so welcome back. Hope you all had a good summer. A uh, very interesting presentation today. It is about the Internet of Things, the IoT, which you may or may not know about. And it's the concept of if this, then that. And I'm not going to explain it to you, but you will learn about this tonight. Uh, we're we're hearing from Matt Presnall, who is is very wise about this topic, and his two children live with type one diabetes. He is the owner of a digital marketing agency specializing in web development, SEO, and conversion optimization. Don't know what that means. He'll help you. So. As we go forward in a normal presentation, here's our disclaimer, which we always do, that loop app is a do-it-yourself closed loop algorithm. This okay. presentation is presented to assist you in making your own decisions in consultation with your healthcare professionals regarding your own diabetes self-management. We will not tell you what to do. You take full responsibility for building and running the system and you do so at your own risk. Just a shout out, so just to remind you, um, starting off the fall, bookmark our website, www.loopandlearn.org. Uh, lots of good material, and we're just building it back up, so there'll be content coming that you'll want to be keep checking out. And then also, um, when you get to the website, you can sign up for the newsletter. Newsletters have been going out now just about once a week, and we're busy, and we give you real critical information like don't update yet. You just heard it here again, don't update yet. Uh, let the people who know how to do this test them and make sure there are no glitches before you have a problem with your own loop. So one more part here, let's talk about IFTTT. It is short for if this, then that. And it is the best way to integrate apps, devices, and services. It was founded on the belief that everything works better together. It's, it's like the way it is in life. Everything works better when everyone's pulling in the right direction. Matt's two children, as I mentioned in life, live with type one, and um, he's been using IFTTT applets, and you'll learn about applets to help automate loop apps and devices. He'll be giving us a tour of the app, I think, and possibly even show you how easy it is to build one, possibly. Um, he knows how to do this. He's going to do this. And um, I'm just real thrilled that we get to hear from Matt and learn a lot. Thank you, Matt, for being here. You bet. Hello, everybody. Um, all right. So a couple of things just to clear up. Um, so my wife, both of my kids definitely do have type one. My wife is in the clear and I'm actually personally tipping towards it. So I'm working on preventing it. Um, the other thing is that we are in Android house. Um, so I am not loop friendly, sorry to say, um, uh, but a lot of what I'm going to be able to show, uh, I think is easily translate, uh, translatable to iOS loop, all that. Um, so it's going to be an overview. And the most important thing about all of this is basically how to go into IFTT to be able to create some of these either applets or recipes, whatever they're calling them these days. Super simple concept um, and uh, uh, happy to show you. So just a show of hands, how many people here are on loop? All right, so I mean, this is the name of the group. All right, so part of it, Joanne, was I didn't realize this was a loop specific group. Uh, so um, I think from the name of it, I'm guessing that this is loop specific. Uh, that's all right though. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. And I'm gonna share um the url so you got that i'm off the document that i'm working off of um you guys can view it you won't be able to uh, mess with it it's just been dropped into chat um i know that it's going to make you nice and distracted but that is fine by me if you want to go and take a look at it i'm going to share it right now though um but this way uh you can go ahead and take a look and skip ahead if there's all right i'm assuming you guys can see this nice little doc here yes okay cool so um, some of the reasons, so first of all, again, show of hands, who knows about IFTT and Night Scout and that you want to be doing stuff with it? Okay, so it looks like, okay, good. And who has done anything with IFTT and Night Scout in the past? All right, good. So um, IFTT is pretty awesome. 
Um, it'll allow you to, uh, you know, uh, log items from the care portal. Um, and you can do, there's lots of ways to do this. Um, I personally, when I'm, you can see that I have a super hardcore watch tan. It's because I wear my pebble on here and I use it to control my daughter's pancreases. I use it to set uh, temp targets for them. I use it to uh, say how many carbs they've just had, uh, to cancel temp targets, all sorts of things. So um, I love IFTT integrations. So you can set BG targets. Uh, you can, and so this is nice when my daughters go over to the grandparents' house and I don't want to have grandparents get woken up. Their overnight target all of a sudden becomes, you know, 140 for the next eight hours, right? Um, uh, and then you can schedule, this one's really nice. So if you have a, anything that you put on your calendar, even if it jumps around day to day, time to time, if you put something on there like volleyball practice, it's going to set a temp target for you um, uh, beforehand, 45 minutes beforehand or whatever period you want beforehand to get you in a good spot to go exercise. Um, and then once you have it set up, you can use shortcuts on your phone. You can use Alexa or Google, which is what we do. Uh, you can use that automated calendar integration. You can use a watch to set things automatically. It's all super nice. Um, so yeah, here's my caveat that I added before. I knew this was a loop only group. We're Android uh, APS, uh, but these concepts should, should work well uh, for anybody. Um, so just a quick overview. Everybody knows what Night Scout is. Night Scout is, you know, where our data is visualized and um, uh, shows what things are going on with, uh, you know, insulin usage, pump usage, uh, BG. Uh, we got all this lovely data. It's all stored here. This is the source of truth for all data related to type 1 diabetes and the person that has type 1 diabetes, right? So um, one of the things that you're going to need to figure out um, uh, is, in order to do this with uh, IFTTT is you need to find out what your secret, um, your secret key is. And the way that you do that is you have to be authenticated. And I don't want to show it because I, uh, for one of my daughters, because I just don't want to throw my key out there. You go to your, uh, you go to your Night Scout website, you log in, you type in your password to be able to make changes in the care portal. And then if you, uh, and I can show you how to do this. Oh shoot, I can't show, no, well, maybe I can. You right click depending on, um, oh shoot, yep, see this is, okay. Depending on if you're in Chrome or some other browser, you wanna either you know uh, view, uh, view page source, go to developer tools, something like that. And when I do this, it's not gonna show it because it's not showing my full desktop. Um, but you want to get to something like this, uh, a console log, and it's going to show a bunch of stuff when you look at it. And one of the things it's going to include is this API secret hash. That value is what you are going to need in a second for IFTT. -T. And uh, don't sweat that. If you don't know how to do it, you're stressed out about it, we'll get to the, how, uh, how to do that. We'll have somebody else share their screen if they need to, and we can figure it out together. So then IFTT, T, I just want to stop after that second T, allows you to connect different services on the web and tie them together. This thing is actually really, really, really cool. And it's not just for, you know, uh, uh, open APS or diabetes. I use this thing to like uh, control my lights. Um, uh, I use it to set my alarm on my home automatically. There's all sorts. Of, so you can tie all these disparate services. Like, you know, if somebody walks in front of my camera, I can have this light from a totally different service turn on. You, you tie, it allows you to tie different services together. In this case, we're going to tie um, uh, the fact that we want something to execute uh, something in Night Scout to actually then go and do that execution in Night Scout. Hey, Matt, I have a quick question. To do the other things, the cool, cool things in your home, do you need to have Alexa or uh, Google uh, you, Assistant? Uh, no, you can, you can schedule them. You need some way to trigger. You need a trigger, right? So the trigger could be anything. It can be time of day. It could be, uh, you know, hour. It could be um, uh, some sensor getting tripped. So it's it's automatic. You can you can also use Alexa to do things as well. So uh, Alexa, turn off my camera light. That was IFTTT. And I got a button on my stream deck. When I press it, it sends it out to the cloud 
And then the cloud sends it back to my house to do that. So IFTT is very, very cool if you're a giant dork like me, uh, but it's very cool if you have diabetes needs as well. Um, so, so IFTT allows you to do that. There's one more piece of IFTT that you need to understand. So IFTT has all of these, it literally has about 60 different services. And why don't we go take a look? And so let's go explore. And so, and we'll look at the services. And so you can connect, you know, uh, let's find something that's pretty common. Um, you can connect your Alexa with uh, Google Sheets. Um, you can connect, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I do connect it. So I do something like this, Alexa, Add hot chocolate to my shopping list. I added hot chocolate to your shopping list. Now I've got another one that says, Alexa, add show cool stuff to my to-do list. I've added show cool stuff to your to-do list. So right now in my email, a so I use this because I got it, I'm getting older. My brain is starting to suck a little bit. And so now I just set up a reminder so that when I go and look at my email, there's gonna be a to-do, where is it? Uh, it's coming in a second, is that the right account? It is. So there'll be a to-do for me to go through and uh, next time I check my email. So it allows you to tie all these cool services together. So that's just a heads up about what IFTT allows you to do. It allows you to connect disparate things together um, uh, so you can uh, do some very cool things, things that you wouldn't think about uh, that you would be able to do normally. So the last thing you need to know out of all of these services, there's something called webhooks. So again, I we were looking at all of these different services and we go look at one, webhooks. Here it is. So webhooks allows you to basically point your browser at a certain URL and when you point your browser at that URL, it's going to do something else out there on the internet. So if you hit a magic URL, like for instance, turning my light on or off. So if I hit this button, I send a command to the internet that, that literally goes out to the internet and it goes to, uh, then it comes back to my house and says, hey, you said turn off that light. And now I press the button and it says, hey, turn on that light. It's a little slower, but it still does it. So. That's how that is how IFTT works with webhooks. It says send a request uh, and a, a receive a request, and then potentially send a request. And to make this a little simpler to visualize, I am going to show you the world's best diagram ever created for this. Um, I spent a few hours using the greatest modeling software I could find, and here we go. So. Um, it's a, the software is so good. It actually makes it look like um, I spent no time on it. Um, so here you go. This is how it works. Um, so we've got our Night Scout website. We've got IFTT. And then we've got me sitting here right here. I'm dad. And I know that my daughter, Ella, is about to go play volleyball in 45 minutes. And I'm looking at Night Scout. And Night Scout's visualizing what her temp target is. And I can see she doesn't have a temp target you know, at 140. Ah, the kid forgot. That's all right. Dad can press the thing on his button that has been pre-set up. So part of this is that when I say I want activity mode, this is a predefined thing that I uh, have gone into um, uh, IFTT. I have gone into webhooks and said, when I, you see the word activity mode spelled out just like this, what this really means is send this request over to Night Scout and have it be that I want her temp target to be 140 for four hours. So this is a little shortcut that then sends a very complex message to Night Scout. So I press a button on my watch, the button on my watch sends it into IFTT, specifically the webhook in IFTT for activity mode. And if we follow this black line, the black line then goes to Night Scout. Night Scout then sets a temp target, right? So the temp target says for the next four hours, your blood sugar should be 140, or that's your target at least. Well, her Android APS is gonna go take a look and see if there's new, any new temp target set. Well, what do you know? There are some new temp targets set. Pull them down, 
set it on um, uh, the device to be 140 for the next four hours. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Everybody, is that, is that, does that track for everybody? Okay. I'm glad that I spent the six hours in that intense software mm -hmm. making this. Um, so one other thing, so you've got multiple ways to control Night Scout um, at the end of the day. So you can use Alexa, and this can be an ad hoc, and this is actually an actual one that I have. So when you set this up with our buddy here, the A word, um, and you need a wake word that indicates that you're going to do IFTT. Well, the wake word for IFTT T is trigger. So you'd have to say this sequence. It's like a, a Harry Potter thing. You have to say this, then this. Now this is your actual um, uh, um, webhook uh, term that you need to use. And it'll be cancel temp target. So uh, this lady will hear it, relay it up to IFTT and this fancy webhook. The webhook will go, oh, I know this. Cancel temp target. This means, all right, we need to clear all temp targets for this user and make sure to pass along our secret uh, password to let it get through. And so it's going to send it along to Night Scout. Night Scout's going to clear that temp target. Her APS is going to go and check to see if there have been any changes, and it's going to clear that temp target. So I, I think that makes sense to everybody. The last one is just, you know, there's a calendar uh, event that will work uh, uh, doing the same thing. And I'm going to show you how you can do calendars with all of this as well. So I'm gonna stop sharing so that I can reshare the correct doc here. And where is it? It's this guy right here. So let's go ahead and screen share. And there we go. All right. Oh, and there's show cool stuff on my in my email. Um, uh, I'm not gonna bother. Uh, all right, so, okay, so you need to know that um, Maker or Webhooks is a service within IFTT. So you don't just magically get Webhooks. All you have to do is go to this URL and it'll go, if you try to create one, it'll go, hey, you need to create a, a Webhook account. And so it's free to go ahead and do it. So then you um, go ahead and create that account. And when you're done, it's going to give you a nice little URL and it will say use slash and then some gobbledygook. Uh, Brenda Moore's here. Um, the um, gobbledygook is your maker key. This is your basically your passcode um, uh, that indicates that you're allowed to call these special commands because we don't want just anybody calling, you know, like uh, uh, commands uh, out there that we've set up. So this, you have a passcode that basically authenticates, allows people to actually use it. So um, any questions at this point? Because we're about to get into the meat of it. Is this- I have a question. Hit me up. How do you ensure that making it so easy to administer insulin or you know change the insulin settings doesn't cause problems? Um, so there is no, bolus there's no i would never in a billion years allow anything and i don't think that uh, night scout or android aps open aps and i doubt kate and company over at loop would allow that to for actual like hey give me 50 units of insulin so it's not it's not that it is a temp target that's allowed to be set so a temp target and there's you know you're not allowed to set a negative 10 temp target i think there's a there's a cap and what that temp target is allowed to be for safety security for that very reason, right? Gotcha. Does that, Thanks. Does, does, does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. We don't want anybody killing kids accidentally or dear God on purpose. Um, okay. So here's my fancy diagram. We can skip that. So use cases, uh, and these are things that we actually do for ourselves. So, um, uh, my girls, you know, they play volleyball, they have games, um, uh, play tennis, track, all that, right? So it goes onto their calendar, and we realized, hey, we already are tracking all this stuff. We don't need to harass them to remember to set these temp targets. We can just go ahead and use IFTT to do it. And it doesn't matter what time of day, what day a week, it'll go ahead and track them down. So let me show you an example of that. I'm just going to skip ahead to where my wife uh, provided an example. So here we are, we've got ice cream party, 
first day of school and then volleyball practice 4 p.m but it can change to any time because of the beauty of iftt so um it's going to go and it's going to look for a specific google or calendar accounts and it is going to in that google calendar account it is going to look for a specific calendar so we have one for you know my daughter and then you can actually add keywords or phrases so volleyball practice so it's going to go look in this account look in this calendar look for these keywords and if i see these keywords then 45 minutes before whatever is the listed time on the event and obviously that 45 is a changeable thing. So it could have been something else, but we decided 45 minutes, which is you know working well for us. Then we want you to do something. What do you what do we want you to do? We want you to make do this. Here we are. This is our web request we were talking about. Um, uh, we want you to send in a let's see here. We want a temp target of 140 for the next 195 minutes. And that happens automatically, folks. So um, if you find out that you, if you notice that you're waking up high in the morning because of the dawn phenomenon and you wake up at the same time every single day, you could potentially set a temp target of 60 or 70 or 80 um, to make sure that um, that dawn phenomenon is a little that you have a temp target. that's a little lower than normal if um, uh, loot. I mean, it's probably fine in your cases, but with teenagers. Um, and hormones, things definitely change for for my girls. Um, hey Matt, I, Matt, I think John had a question. Yeah, John, go for it. Can you make that trigger based on like returning the glucose value with the, those web hooks? So can you say if after between if between five and eight a.m. the glucose is above this, then enact a thing? Or am I getting too? You, I, I think that you are. I think you're getting. To, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. Hold on, hold on a second, because I don't think that that is a value that you can play with. So, okay, the problem with that is that we don't. There's nothing in here that is like loop or open APS of like send a value, right? It is. This is a. So the the trigger in each case is something related to. Uh, in this case, um, uh, you know sure. keywords. Otherwise, it's something else that we have available to us in scope. We don't have blood sugar values in scope. There's no such thing in IFTTT as Night Scout. If there was, we can't, then, just, we can't just do an API call and get it and evaluate it and all that, right? You can't. I mean, I, I personally am doing that, but I'm doing that not in IFTT. I am doing that by making calls to the APIs and then doing writing my own code to do it. And because I can't figure out how to do it in IFTTT. All right. I think we're barking up the same tree there. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 the other, the other route is that there are alerts and maybe API calls that can be made directly out of Night Scout. And if you read the doc and if I switch the tab, can you guys see that I switched? You can't. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's just weird how. Okay. Yeah, as long as you're in Chrome, we can see it. Okay, you just okay. can't switch out of Chrome. Okay, I was worried that the you wouldn't be able to see my tabs, but that's good. Okay, <laughs> so the setup that they have that they talk about, they talk about needing to change the Night Scout website. You don't actually for this stuff. Uh, okay, so um, I haven't shown you this yet, but there are two different very good resources for how to do all this work. But one of them is that you need to go to, and let me find it, Maker. So there's your Maker key. So they say to do this, to log into Night Scout. You don't need to do any of this for what we're talking about. The only reason to add this in is for what John and I were just talking about, is that if you want Night Scout to be able to send alerts out if something weird is going on, then you need to add that Maker key. But for what we're talking about, um, it doesn't apply. So you can skip this step if you want to. But John, if you go and look into it, you'll see that um, Night Scout does have some alerting um, uh, built in. I, uh, I, I couldn't get it to work and I ended up writing my own stuff. It's uh, decently complicated and uh, doesn't work exactly the way that I would like it to work, but uh, it, is, it is helpful. Um, that, that's what I'm thinking is sticking some scripting in somewhere. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah you bet, man. Um, can, I, can I just jump in for two things? One is if there's something that feels 
complicated to you. We know how to reach Matt, so don't worry about that. Uh, he hasn't agreed to it, but we know how to do that. Um, <laughs> secondly, um, I'm going to add an IFTT trigger for if I see emails come in with subject line. No. Um, and the other thing is, if you've never done this and you're looking at it going, I'm lost, I don't get it. Um, it is very menu fed. And I think a starting point, and correct me if I'm wrong, is what is that I want to do? Work figure forward. out the task you want first. Ben West. Oh, we got, I'm admitting Ben West. Ben West is my hero. I got him first. You, I, I don't know, man. That was pretty close. Where's Ben? I there know. I was right there. I clicked a button. So. Ben West is here. He's the one that made this all possible. He, folks. He's okay. muted. So uh, I think he's he's coming in now. Yeah, I, I saw him unmute himself. So if you don't oh, know, man. Ben West made all of this possible. He's my hero. I've met him multiple times, different spots. I, I brag to people that, I, yeah, that, I, that I've thank met. Thank you him. for that. It's good, to, it's good to hear from you today, man. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm super super glad you're here. I uh, yeah, this is a uh, uh, this is this is real a real nice treat. Um, okay, so getting oh, Carrie has a question. Carrie, go for it. You're uh, you're muted. There we go. Um, so I have a, so I loop and I use uh, IFTT a little bit differently for pushovers, um, but I have a quick question about the temp targets the term temp targets, um, the way that I use them is I have to be on my daughter's phone and I have to create the overrides in her loop phone. Are those the temp targets that you're enacting remotely or are you actually like, you know, sitting at your desk saying for the next four hours, I want you to do an override that I haven't created in her phone? No, I, I, I don't need to do that. It's been pre-established with the uh, JSON and so that's the part that we haven't got into and that I'm about to send. And I believe having looked at the documentation that this does work, so I think it's right here. I think this works for you um, loop folks as well, that it does the, I don't have a concept of a, like what you guys for an override. Um, oh, because you don't have overrides on, on Android. It just, I mean, it just whatever you decide it is, is what it is. Um, so you've got a default pro profile that's running on the pump. And then you have, temp targets. So, and I think that for loop, let's take a look. So I'm not a loop guy, as I've said. Maybe someone who's used both can answer if an override is different, because you said it was predefined. Yes. And I'll show you the, uh, how, well, here we go. This is how it is predefined. Okay. So I talked to you guys about the fact that you need a maker. Um, uh, you're going to need a name for your uh, maker. Um, what's it called? Uh, and it's right this is this it? Oh, it's easy. Uh, I think it's activity. Yeah, temp target. Uh, cancel temp target. Hold on a second. Where's the name of these things? Uh, these don't seem to be lining up with what I expect. So I, I'm pretty sure for Android APS, there is a single temp target. And what you're setting is the value of the temp target. And right. there's a, a real, you know, a relationship of, uh, I think uh, ISF changes with temp target, but not uh, carb ratio. Whereas with loop, um, this would be as if you were using the custom override and sending information to set okay. up the custom override without a named override. In addition, you have named overrides with loop. And that's what you're talking about, Carrie. I'm pretty sure where you, yeah, you, I just you have to set up yeah. the named override ahead of time and you have to upload it to Night Scout so Night Scout knows about it. And then on IFTTT. So he is talking about something yeah. different. Well, it it's it's similar, but custom. different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think it is different. Because I think you can do a custom one with mm -hmm. loop that's not predefined. And yeah. so he's just doing a custom one remotely, which I um, was actually wondering if, was, if that was possible two days ago. And now no, I know loop, loop won't uh, respond to these. Loop, uh, uh, loop won't let you do a custom loop, one. Yeah, loop before. requires it to be previously defined. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so, so we wouldn't be able to tell Alexa to send a temporary over Right, I guess. But, yeah, no, it has, has to be a predefined override with loop. Whereas okay. with AAPS, there's only a single override and it's called temporary target. And that's and what he's changing. Yeah. I guess some people go in and save, you know, 70, 70%, 80%, 90%, you know, overrides. 
um, just ahead of time. I have like 15. <laughs> yeah, you know how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that for me. For ICE that are not remote overrides. So yeah, again, this is this is not my this is not my Ballywick. Um, set the remote with the dev branch. You have to. Oh, to follow the directions for setting up remote overrides in Night Scout directly. So this might, sorry, again, this is outside my my knowledge base. This might this might work for you, or not. Um, it looks like it can trigger the ones you've already set up, but it can't set one up for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, so just for, for me, then that would be when I go to set up my, uh, when I go to set up my IFTT uh, stuff, I would go onto the phone then to set those, those other ones up as well. So mm -hmm. I just want to add real fast on what, what I do to cancel an override or to start a pre-existing one of my 15 overrides for my daughter. <laughs> I just use shortcuts which I know is an Apple thing. And I can just click the shortcut and click a button that says cancel override and that's it without having to, to go through, without having to go through this. But it sounds like Android APS needs this in order for that to happen. Uh, I mean, all I have to do is click a button on my watch that says cancel temp target and it cancels the temp target. So I don't know if that's the same. I mean, it sounds like the same thing to me. Well. Somebody had set up a uh, like a loop shortcut app that has several shortcuts like Sage and Cage and um, a whole bunch of things, and there was a link to that. So it's probably this. It's it's probably the same programming. It's just somebody already did it for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it. Well, yeah. Let's let let's get into the meat of it a little bit, just so hopefully it's not so theoretical and scary and is a little more, um, okay, that's not as hard as I thought it would be. Um, so yeah, for eating soon. So I mean, it's honestly, it's fairly simple. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna just show you how to set one up. So, um, and if you wanna make this stuff more readable, you could probably just go to a uh, online JSON formatter. If, if, if for whatever reason, it's a little hard for you to read, um, John, oh look at that! <laughs> this is me out, Ben West. This is me outputting a bunch of Night Scout crap in order to write my own sort of um, stuff. So here we go. That's a little easier to read, right? So um, the event type ne this needs to match up with stuff that you see in Night Scout itself. Uh, and when I say it needs to match up with Night Scout it I itself, I mean right here. So when you go, and again, I don't want to show you, well, I guess I can, sh eh, no, I don't want to show you my daughter's site just because this is going to be, this is being recorded. But if you go to uh, add a, an event entry, um, uh, you know, there's one for temp target. Where is it? Uh, temp basal start, uh, temp basal end. And then if we go and look, um, here we go. It actually needs to match up. So this is the this is the pretty name that you see on the outside. In most cases, it's going to match the actual value. But the actual value here is what you need in order to get it to work um, with uh, um, Night Scout. So it needs to be one of these values here. So we'll go back to the JSON. And so we've got temporary target. And let's see if that matches up with what I just saw, where was that? It was right, oh, it was right here, wasn't it? Uh, temporary target right there. So this option value right here, temporary target. And then what do we have in it? Um, reason eating soon, uh, target top, target bottom, um, and then the duration. So these are things that if you just wanted to mess with temp targets and you wanted to make different versions, so the activity mode one, is the exact same version of this. It just has different values, right? So you've got um, eating soon, um, but you can have activity mode. You can have, you know, I've got one that's four hours for at uh, 140 um, uh, so that, you know, I can keep my daughter running relatively high. The secret hash is the thing that will actually allow the um, uh, command to go through. So again, the way that you get that is by going to your Night Scout website 
And if you open up the, and so I can show you how to get to the console, apparently, if I just right click, inspect, and this is in Chrome that I'm doing this, but if I go to console, this is where all these cool messages come out. And if I shift reload, now, obviously you wanna do this on the Night Scout website when you're authenticated, you will see some of these responses come back and one of them will include the, um, what is it called? The API secret hashed. So all you gotta do is do a search like I did here for API secret and it will show you what this value is. That's the value that you need to include, um, right? And right, uh, let's go ahead and convert or format beautify. That's where you need to include this value. So I'm going to create a temp target right now in um, uh, IFTT to show you. And this is my new secret, which is not going to work, um, but it will work for creating um, a uh, an applet or a recipe, whatever they're calling them these days. Um, so we're going to go create one. So we want to add, and I believe we're just doing webhook to webhook. We are. It's going to be a webhook. And so we want to receive a web request and the event name. So let's call this. Uh, so it's very important what you name this because this is potentially what you're gonna be talking to Alexa or Google about. So it needs to be, it needs to make sense. And you do, there are no spaces allowed. You generally do want it to be all lowercase. And if you do need a space, instead of a space, use an underscore. So we're gonna call it eating soon two. So, because I already have an eating soon. We're gonna create the trigger. And we are going to, so, okay, so it's going to receive that request. So you're going to somehow send a request that says, hey, I want to do eating soon. You don't need to worry yet about how you are even going to do that. But what happens now? Okay, we want to set it for, well, I guess that value that we saw um, right over, over here, right? So we want to send a web request or a web hook. So this is, um, this is basically making API calls. So there's only really one action here, and that is to make a web request. And so I'll get the URL for this in a second, but we want to do a, po uh, a post and the content type. So this stuff right here, this ugly stuff is called JSON. It's a form of uh, JavaScript that allows you to store things in a key value pair. So when I say key value pair, I mean, we've got a key of reason and a value of eating soon. So you'll see that they're always separated by this colon. Um, so we're going to go in and, oops, it's over here. And so we're going to add, I believe, into, oh, first we need the JSON. You got to select JSON as the content type. And the body, you want to make sure you got no leading spaces, no trailing spaces. That's our body right there. Um, and now you need the URL. And the URL is going to be your Night Scout URL. Um, and let's find this one right here. Um, let's see if it talks about it. It should be treatment, shouldn't it? Treatment. Ah, oh, there we go. So um, all you need to do is grab that part. So you you take your whatever your URL is for your Night Scout website and then grab this. Make sure you don't have double slashes. So I'm going to just grab this and then change it to a fake one. So you do, do this and create. So the URL is this. And again, we don't want leading. So make sure you don't have any leading or trailing um, spaces. And then you want to make sure that this is correct. Um, and no, uh, no slash afterwards either. So we'll just do my name, MJP, and application is JSON, and there's my lovely wife, and go ahead and create action, and continue. And so we now have, this is our maker event. Just have a quick question for you, I'll wait. 
I'm talking the whole day. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and go over. Okay. So if you come over later, we can leave a clock. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Um, all right. So you got to finish it out. If you wanted to, you could receive notifications when it runs, which is actually kind of nice um, uh, when you're first testing, but let's go ahead and check now. And I don't, I forget where the history, maybe it's in the archive or view activity. There it is. It's probably going to tell me it failed at some point making the run. So now you have this available to you. And so this is where you would drop it into some something that can make the call. So actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and hook it up with Alexa right now. So if we want to, uh, well, okay. So this is where you could use this. Um, uh, this is where I use it on my Pebble watch. So I, on my Pebble watch, I have a, I have an app that allows me to make web requests. And so I supply the URL for this specific um, uh, event, and then it go, uh, then it will go ahead and fire it. Um, if I want to hook this up so that uh, I have it working on Alexa, this is the way we do it. Um, so this one I haven't done in forever, but I think I probably got it. So if this Alexa and say a specific phrase, so I think that's the one. Yep. Uh, yes. Thanks for your feedback. So you want to make sure that the phrase. I, I think it should be eating soon, not eat soon. Oh, see, you want uh, that was a test then to see if people were paying uh, attention. Clever. Does that does that? I think that's what I was doing. I think Marion uh, passed. <laughs> you can't get anything past Marion. Yeah. Well, you yeah. So that I was about to say, you got to make sure that it's exactly the same as what you had done before. Um, uh, but oh, actually, you know what? And this is different. Uh, what is the phrase? So we don't actually have to do that um, because that was for the maker request, um, and this is just talking to Alexa. So. Um, so we can say eating soon also and create the trigger. Okay, so when I say that phrase to our lady friend back there, um, something's going to happen. Now I got to define what that something is going to happen. So it's the exact same thing that we did before. So we're going to make a webhook and we're going to make the exact same webhook that we did before. Um, so we're going to use that same URL um, and we'll make it MJP. Okay, who remembers what the method was? Post. Post, all right. And who remembers what the content type is supposed to be? JSON. JSON. All right, and then um, it goes in the body here. And so I'll just copy it out of here. And instead though, I'm gonna change. So why don't you guys tell me what I'm doing, uh, what I've, how I've changed this now. So the target is, so what what does this do now? I hope it gives you an error because your top is 90 and your bottom is 110. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Rebecca. <laughs> Damn, I'm not used to working with yeah. audiences this sharp. Rebecca passed too. Damn. Yeah, that's right. It was a test. Good job. What else? So, so wider range for a shorter time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, the, the other thing to let you know is that this entered by shows up in your uh, Night Scout logs, and it can be whatever you want it to be. So it could be Matt was here. Um, so that part doesn't matter. This event type is, you know, it's a uh, it's very specific. It needs to match um, uh, what I was showing you before. Um, uh, and yeah, you do probably want to follow uh, a top and bottom uh, target correctly. So we'll go ahead and do that. And so now, and I'll even set up a notification for when it runs. Alexa, trigger eating soon also. Okay, so that dink noise meant that it ran. So let's go ahead and see if we've got activity. 
queue activity. Uh, applet turned on. So it looks like that was it. Uh, we'll do it again. Alexa, trigger eating soon also. Um, and if I refresh this, uh, I didn't do it there. It says it never ran. Uh, Does it only count if it successfully runs? Uh, yeah, it's not, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, number one, it's not going to be successful. Number two, I don't know if it has, Alexa has picked up yet that it, that this is a keyword for it, but it should be, um, cause I think it should send it over. Uh, it should, it should just be dumb and just go, okay, I've got an IFTT thing I need to do. So I'm just should send it out. Um, I'm going to try one more time. Um, cause it, well, I mean here we can go and take a look at my current applets and I'll just run one right now. That one was saying that it was run. It 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 was. Yes. Oh, you're right. Run. To, yeah, I just needed to update. So thank you. Run two times. View activity. Yeah, it was just. Yeah, and it's going to fail because this is not a legal webhook, right? I made this up, and the key is wrong too. So both of them. So, but it ran, but I set up a bogus one. So is this? So is this making sense so far? Um, is this leading? So I, I have a question. You set up a, a webhook trigger, and then you set up an Alexa thing, but then you had to repeat your webhook trigger. I kind of thought you were going to have Alexa trigger the webhook trigger, but that would be nice. So yeah, you found the redundancy in this, right? What would be nice is if I could, and maybe I can. So so you know how how would you have run the webhook without using Alexa? Is that a separate? thing you would have done? I think oh, we said okay. the first one is Got a button. It. Yeah, by the button. Yeah. Got it. OK. But you know what? You, you do have me curious. So I'm just going to do one more. And so we'll do Alexa. And I don't think that allows you to hook into predefined uh, web hooks. But let's take a look. Say a specific phrase. Sorry, I don't know that one. All right. So now we'll go take a look at, I don't think that with webhooks, you can, there's like a library you can go pull from. No, it, so that's the, the problem is, is there, this is where you would, Mir, uh, Miriam, you would expect you'd have a library of previous uh -huh. webhooks you could call on. Yeah. Uh -uh. Okay. All right. So, so I have to duplicate them. So if I want to do it so that I can use it on my phone or on my watch, then I have to have it be webhook to webhook. But if I want to, and so now I've got it hooked up with that lady, but if I want to hook it up with Google, guess what? I got to create another one for Google. And then I got to uh, do this webhook piece that you see me doing. I got to do that again as well. So you got to, and so if you make any changes, then you got to make it across all of the different IFTT uh, recipes that you've, that you've made. Does that make sense? All right, um, let me get back to what I've got. Um, web hooks, doo -doo 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 -doo, fancy diagram. Um, so yeah, uh, just just a heads up that in my house, um, we actually use the uh, A lady back there to um, do, I mean, obviously eating soon, activity mode, canceling temp targets, um, uh, pump site change, um, uh, CGM because all this stuff then gets visualized. And then I, this is where, I don't know if there's anything else that does this, but when the time gets low, like the site change or the CGM, um, uh, start the time on that, uh, starts to creep in on, Hey, this stuff needs to get changed. Then emails and text messages get sent to my kids. Uh, if they don't do anything about it, then they get sent to my wife and I, um, so I, I don't know anything else that does anything like that. Um, but having that stuff in the in, in Night Scout allows us to then query it to be able to do things based on it. Um, example of posts. So we already talked about this. Um, yeah, and just you know, examples of what I've got going on right here. Uh, the Google Calendar integration we already looked at. Um, and then, yeah, resources. Um, so yeah, there's uh, good documentation, um, uh, either through open APS documentation 
or the Night Scout um, uh, documentation as well, and then IFTTT. Uh, so I've done a lot of talking, a lot of showing. I'm totally happy to do a lot of helping now. So if anybody's stuck on anything, if anybody wants to practice, Matt, this didn't make any sense. I'm ready to I'm ready to help and see what we can figure out. Since I think we're a little bit on a, a, a time lock on this, what I was thinking, if this makes sense to people here, some have used this, some have never seen it, and they have that look. Um, what if we put out a poll giving um, 10 examples of um, applets that you might want to do? Take a vote, people want the top four. We get back together and we have people build it while you're there stepping them through it and help them get a drone or three so they start to see that it isn't that scary it looks overwhelming if i can do it anybody can do it and it's it's really doable the first one is a little uncertain because you don't know what the error codes are but once you start to see what it what it does you start to see the format and maybe we pick the top three or four and we just build them um, I use them to put in activities. So if anyone asks what happened at this day, I could say, well, that was exercise for 20 minutes or that was um, Pilates or whatever, so that it makes sense because anyone asks you what you did yesterday, who knows. Um, but we can find out what people want the most and see if we can build it. What is, does that make some sense for you? Yes. Um, it, let's give it another five or 10 minutes. Does anyone have questions? Are you still absorbing everything you've just heard? I, I think it's the kind of thing where you need to go and read the documentation and try a few things. Um, yeah. So yeah, in the, in the document that I just shared out to, um, here, let me, oh, I'm not going to trust my stream deck for this. Um, where is it? This right here. In, in the documentation, um, I got a little video that I, I made this like six years so, ago. Or so Matt, can you copy those links um, into the chat? Mm -hmm. And then Joanne will be saving those links and it can show up underneath the YouTube video that's gonna be saved. So if you just copy that resources section and just paste the whole thing into. Sure, yeah. yeah. That'll be really helpful, thank you. You bet. Uh, chatty chat. Oh, there it is. Oh, I'm just, no, I'm, see what I'm doing. Uh, sorry, I've, I've been sending stuff out, but I've been sending it only to Glenn Webster, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like a noob with this group. Jeez, yeah, like, geez. yeah, I, I just got that. I see it. So that's great. Thank you. You bet. Um, so yeah, I made this video, damn, six years ago. Um, using Pebble, Open APS, and Alexa. So if you want to watch that, you can see how it works. It's really nice to see you click a button on your watch and it immediately changes the stuff on the um, Night Scout website. You see the temp target get visualized. I mean, you, that was six years ago. The, the, this software is amazing. So um, yeah, there's there's lots that you can do with it. Okay, last one or two questions. <laughs> how many um, how many how many applets have you got set up uh was that you ben yeah um uh i probably have well i mean i have 53 but that is you know includes turning my camera light on and off and all that for type one i probably have maybe 25 30 and it could probably grow um let me show you what i got where am i right here um back I'm guessing that like the the activity ones are your favorite. <laughs> they are I, 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 activity eating soon and cancel. Yes, there's an uh, there's another admin in Loop and Learn who has used this uh, when his blood sugar is dropping or low, the lights turn on in his house. Oh, or nice. they flash. Um, and so there there are some some fun but very oh. useful. Thanks. That's that's what I'm after is to be able to trigger events based on an API call to Night Scout for the glucose, let's say, and then operate Philips Hue lights or other things. So yeah, Jason Calabrese, who's a total badass, hooked me up with a secret 
Hey, hey, Matt, you just, you just want, you're really quiet. Oh, am I? Yeah. I was hoping that, I was hoping that wasn't my end. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Um, it's probably on Apple. So is it, it Mark that does the lights, Joanne? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we could tie John and to Mark to mm -hmm. make a connection on how you do it. With Can I say something? Um, sure. So does anyone use pushovers or am I the only one here using pushovers? Anybody know what that is? Oh, <laughs> maybe that's the way he does it. He does a pushover alert. Um, um, well, lights on. I, I don't know, but in, in Heroku, you know, where you, you can set your, your targets for like what's considered low or falling, um, it can generate um, alerts for like warning your blood sugar is dropping this many points and you do it through IFTT, you make an applet um, that connects with pushover. And then I get, I have the pushover app on my phone. So all day long, I get uh, pushover notifications that tell me certain things are happening with my daughter's loop. Like every time she gets a bolus, um, I get a notification that she got 0.05. I can get it on my watch or on my phone. Or if a temporary target was turned on or canceled, I also get a notification for that. Um, but also, like you were just men mentioning with the lights, um, there's an urgent low happening soon and a um, a warning. Um, a warning you're going to go low, which you can set up for yourself, what you could, you know, have it go off at hundred if you wanted to. Um, but there is a little bit of inconsistency. Like sometimes these break and you have to go in and kind of turn them off and turn them back on and, and refresh them. But um, the lights so, thing is pretty cool. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Pushovers are another way of getting that, I guess, than giving an API call. Is that the idea? So I don't know if folks know about this here though, the sugar pixel. Yeah. Yeah, I freaking love that thing. Um, that answers a lot of questions, issues that, that I've got as well. But yeah, um, John, if you're curious, I'll show you um, where you can find the, um, the best uh, API endpoint for, um, okay, I'll, and I'll make that video not private. Um, uh, I will show you where you can find the best uh, API for pulling back all data related to Night Scout. It's got everything in there. It's um, uh, Jason Calabrese uh, told me about it because all the published stuff doesn't have what this one has. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So um, yeah. let me let me let me get that for you once I change my video. And, and there is on on the Night Scout documentation. There's there's pages about pushovers and remote notifications. I. I For sure, it, stuff I have it there. Yeah, I spend a lot of time fiddling with the API just for diagnosing sites yeah. and stuff, but I haven't done pushovers. Yeah. And if you get to have better doc on the API, yeah. Well, if you start out with Lib Docs, there's a, a Night Scout cross reference because actually, <laughs> Night Scout, when they updated their docs, they started with a copy of Loop. So, Loop Docs, so there's a lot of stuff that KDD Simone wrote up for Loop Docs that um, I took out of loop docs because the copies show, then showed up in Night Scout. Mm -hmm. So I put cross references from loop docs into Night Scout. So the, all that information is still there and uh, you can go read about it. I love all the work that's been done to document everything. Yeah. Thank you to everybody. I think one last important point to make here is that this is free to try. You get five apps for free. Um, if you want to do more than that, there's a cost, but it's worth going in and playing with IFTTT and just seeing if it's going to work for you before you spend money on it. I, they started charging, I think about a year ago, and at yeah. least at that point, they asked, how much are you willing to spend? And I think they gave a range, so I said $3, and I get billed $3 a month. I can oh, nice. use that. <laughs> I get billed one ninety nine, but that is no longer available. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I, I think I, I think for those of you who have been using this, th this is just kind of refreshing a lot. For those of you who've never seen it, um, it may be a bit overwhelming, but but seriously, it is doable. It it has some very cool features, and um, I think we'll probably just need another session to build a few and let you actually type along and build your own. You'll see where it is, and 
you'll you'll recognize them over and over again. Um, so we'll collect what people. I want super to do. love the activity, the idea of the calendar with activity things because my son has. I think four different times for swim team during the week. Oh yeah, you don't have to remember anymore. So what we should do is figure out how to set up a calendar activity to use a named override for loop. And uh, I'm not volunteering, but I'm saying we should figure out how to do that. And then we'll have Carol do a open mic where she sets it up and Matt's there to help her. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, I'm volunteering you, Matt. <laughs> She's not even here to defend herself, so is it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, unlisted. There we go. And save. So I'm, I'm going to wind this down, but I would like the option to come back <laughs> um, if, if you're willing to spend some more time with us. I, I know you're very busy. Um, Oh, me? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm uh, yeah. totally uh, happy to see what folks have uh, come up with. So two updates, that video should now work for everybody. Um, uh, and the other one is that John in the, oh, and John, uh, that is the URL you want to hit that has all of the data um, uh, coming out of Night Scout. Okay. Thank you, Matt. I'm going to hope to uh, have the video edited by tomorrow morning. It takes a while to upload. Uh, if I run into trouble, I've got Mike in my back pocket, and he doesn't know that yet. Um, but it should be up by tomorrow afternoon. I will put links in the discussion on the YouTube channel. Um, so people who have questions, I will not give your email address, Matt, basically because I don't have it, um, <laughs> but I could find it. Um, so I... I I think this will be really useful and really fun. And it gives you something that you can do that just adds to your repertoire with Loop or um, Android ABS or whatever it is you're using. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, Matt, we've worked hard to get the date. I appreciate everything you've been through. And um, Thank you, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll I, I, I've done nothing compared to what the good Mr. Ben West. I tell stories about Ben West and his family sitting around like sniffing uh, radio signals. Um, so <laughs> he's the re he is the reason why we, uh, we've got this. Uh, where at least my family had uh, and uh, Android and Open APS. So and Dana Lewis and tons of other people have donated. Uh, the, K the Katie's that you mentioned are both freaking amazing. So yeah, there's lots of amazing people out there. I'm yeah. doing one percent, 0.1% of what they've done. So happy to help. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, everybody. Uh, we'll get back to you on this. And uh, thanks for showing up tonight. This is technical, but it was, it's really usable. I promise you. All right. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>